Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about acquired von Willebrand disease. Acquired von Willebrand disease. And someone is asking, anything like that? Von Willebrand disease is von Willebrand disease. Which one is acquired von Willebrand disease? No argument? Wait a bit. Let's go. This topic is about acquired von Willebrand disease. But we need to remind ourselves that we are all familiar with von Willebrand disease that is inherited. And that is true. That is the one that is mostly you know, diagnosed. Okay? The acquired von Willebrand syndrome or acquired von Willebrand disease is possible, but not very common. The probable Pathogenesis is essentially that we may be dealing with autoimmune conditions. And I have said this in many of my presentations. You can check my channel. For example, Hashimoto thyroiditis or Graves disease or Crohn's disease and osteoarthritis. You know, that when you have an autoimmune condition, please check out for the rest. Okay? So there is an autoimmune condition or more giving us conditions, right? Producing autoantibodies against von Willebrand factor. Analogy is like having a community always being besieged by enemies. If they are not completely dead, with time, the population of that community will be very low because later on could even become a ghost you know, town or city. The same thing is applicable here. When there is lots of bombardment from autoantibodies, the von Willebrand factor will become depleted. Another probable theory is that the molecular weight of von Willebrand factor is very high. So passing through narrow vessels, like stenosed arteries and ventricular septal defects or aortic stenosis, can lead to proteolysis. And the last theory is that certain cancer cells with von Willebrand factor being absorbed into the malignant cells will decrease the concentration of the von Willebrand factor in the circulatory system. Acquired von Willebrand syndrome or acquired von Willebrand disease is associated with the following. So when you hear the word acquired von Willebrand syndrome or von Willebrand disease acquired, then think of the following. It is rare. It is not mutated. Along the line in life, people acquire it. There must be an underlying pathology somewhere. So anyone diagnosed with that, let's look down, down, down. Let's dig down. There is a cause somewhere. No family history here. Even if someone in the family had been diagnosed with that in the past, it's not passed down from generation to generation, no. And mostly found in elderly. Well, maybe because at that age group, more will have cancer, more might have autoimmune diseases. Clinical features. Why are we burning ourselves by clinical features since we are familiar with one bleeding disease? Another person is asking me, Come on, tell us since it's not the same as no von Willebrand disease that we know. Okay, okay, no argument. The answer is right here. The clinical features will be like what you are going to find in von Willebrand disease that you have known. Okay, the hereditary one. Okay, there will be increased breathing time, epistasis, ecchymosis, angiodysplasia, postpartum hemorrhage. As a matter of fact, this is why von Willebrand disease is of a big concern in women, okay? I knew a case of a woman who had von Willebrand disease and the blood group is O negative. So she could only receive blood donation from fellow O negative. Massive bleeding, post-dental surgery. 
many will know for the first time that they have von Willebrand disease, even hereditary, after having dental surgery and they are bleeding. And that will lead to more tests done along, you know, bleeding factors, right? And then they will get the diagnosis. And of course, bleeding gum. What are the possible causes? Remember, I have said, if you find a cure from Brisbane disease, then there is a cause. Okay, autoimmune. Here we can be dealing with Hashimoto's steroiditis. Please check my channel. There's a separate full presentation on Hashimoto's steroiditis. Could be systemic lupus, erythromatosis, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, Sodium syndrome, pernicious anemia, leading to megaloblastic anemia, type 1 diabetes mellitus, ulcerative colitis, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, all the above will increase autoantibody against von Willebrand factor and subsequently depleting the level of von Willebrand factor. Other causes will be cancers like Wim's tumor, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, multiple myeloma, hematoproliferative disorders, myelo or lymphoproliferative disorders. There is an entity known as monoclonal gammopathies, that is a monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance that could lead to uh, myeloma or multiple myeloma later on, but they, you know, the monoclonal gammopathy is, is non-cancerous, okay? But the problem is there will be production of uh, uh, paraproteins, okay? Which is abnormal. And they have uh, probability of coming down with infection as well, okay? So, Monoclonal gammopathy is a probable cause of acquired von Willebrand disease. The other time I have talked about uh, the large size or, or the or molecular size of the von Willebrand factor and passing to the nose arteries, right? Here, here, there you go, ventricular septal defect, Aortic stenosis, ventricular assist device. And lastly, as per causes, apotheorgism, gastrointestinal tract with angiodysplasia, some certain medications like vaporgasis, some antibiotics like ciprofloxacin or grisophobin in fungi. Diagnosis. History of bleeding will be sudden. So, this is a patient without family history of von Willebrand disease. And suddenly, the individual is bleeding massively. Then, you take a gas, but this could not be diagnosed without certain medical conditions. For example, when there is this sudden increase in bleeding tendency or actual bleeding, then you look out for the following. Autoimmune diseases, oncological cases, cardiovascular diseases like aortic stenosis, ventricular septal defect, and so on. In other words, you can't make the diagnosis of acquired von Willebrand disease without making the diagnosis of the responsible condition, okay? Something is causing it somewhere. There's an underlying pathology somewhere. So no diagnosis of one vibram disease that is acquired without the diagnosis, the definitive diagnosis of an underlying pathology. Okay, still on diagnosis. There will be curiosity to assay for von Willebrand factor because this is someone without the diagnosis of von Willebrand disease, 
no family history of von Willebrand disease in this individual, but at 65, 75, or 85, the pictures I could pick are pointing to von Willebrand disease, right? Then the curiosity will lead me to assay von Willebrand factor. Lo and behold, result is back. There's deficiency, but there is no hereditary diagnosis. Then I'll flash back. What's going on? Oh, there's an entity called Aqua von Willebrand disease. Oh, that is likely the situation here. Then I'll start wondering, do I need to do something for that? Yes, you have to. Because there's no family history here. There is no hereditary diagnosis here. This person has never shown this before. And now at 75, 85, you are now down with this. We have to get down to the bottom of this. What's next? We will head to the lab. On getting there. We are going to ask it for von Willebrand factor, which should be low. We will have resocetine cofactor that should determine von Willebrand factor binding capability to platelet glycoprotein 1B. And what are we going to get? Of course, it's going to be decreased. Collagen binding assays, von Willebrand factor antigen levels, and von Willebrand factor propeptide. The gold standard in acquired von Willebrand disease is the detection of antibodies to von Willebrand factor. Still at the lab, we want to know all the parameters. We are going to have prolonged bleeding time. There will be decreased von Willebrand factor antigen, decreased retrocytin cofactor activity, decreased factor 8 coagulant activity, and there will be no other bleeding disorder or disorders. The bleeding severity will be variable. It's like you are getting result of what you've called for in the previous slide, right? Treatment. The core of the treatment here is to treat the underlying pathology. For example, if this is autoimmune, get your steroids. Immunosuppressants will be welcomed in autoimmune condition. If this is cancer, of course, call on the oncologist. They will go with their radiotherapy or radiation or chemotherapy. If this is a case of aortic stenosis, call cardiothoracic surgeon. Now, they are going to fix that. Still on treatment, intravenous immunoglobulin is useful if it's caused by monoclonal gammopathy. That is, antibodies are in the blood. Monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance is non cancerous. But there will be paraproteins, and with that, there is likelihood of increase of having multiple myeloma, which is a plasma cell cancer. You can have von Willebrand factor concentrate, but if you don't handle the underlying pathology, we are still going to come back to acquire von Willebrand disease. You can use desmopressin or recombinant factor 8 if it will contain von Willebrand factor. Or you can also use factor 7. Blood transition immediately will be a reasonable decision. And of course, treating the inners, that is the underlying pathology, will end the problem. Prognosis is a factor of the etiology. In other words, whether we are going to get out of this problem or not, 
it depends on what is responsible for it. Let me give you an example. The prognosis as per autoimmune diseases will be different if the problem is secondary to a particular cancer that could not be cured, or it is a problem secondary to a surgical condition like a autism stenosis that could be fixed in some hours. Okay, so that's why prognosis is difficult to determine. The prognosis is a factor of the etiology. However, note this. I have said it before, and I'm going to repeat some of them here. This is a rare disease, and it's more in elderly. The diagnosis is delayed, and most of the time misdiagnosed. No past history of bleeding disorder in this person, and no personal or family history of von Willebrand disease before now. So it is acquired. The take home here is it is acquired. And we must look for the underlying pathology. If you get that, we'll get it cured. So it is curable. If the underlying pathology is curable. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Please remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it.